This video shows how the weak field inverse metric can take this form here, where both indices are contravariant, as a very good approximation. It shows how this approximation is reasonable so long as the size of the perturbation of H is small. So if we want to model a weak gravitational field in general relativity, we can start with a metric of flat Minkowski space and add a second metric term that represents the small perturbations from flat space. So let's take our metric as being one acting on a flat background Minkowski metric with small variations in curvature provided by the second term H covariant alpha beta, covariant indices alpha beta. So the metric here is G alpha beta, covariant indices, is eta, the flat Minkowski metric of Minkowski space, plus this small perturbation term, where the size of the perturbation term is much less than one, so it's a very small perturbation, so it's a small variation from flat space. Now what is the inverse to this metric? That is what form does G contravariant alpha beta take? And we can rewrite this before we get to what, what, to, what it, form it takes, we can write H alpha beta as G alpha beta minus eta alpha beta. Now this H term here, H alpha beta is symmetric, so A is symmetric in the two lower indices, alpha and beta. And because both G alpha beta and eta alpha beta are symmetric, so we know that H alpha beta is also symmetric, both G alpha beta and eta alpha beta are n by n symmetric matrices. It says that H alpha beta is also an n by n symmetric matrix as well. And both G alpha beta and eta alpha beta are diagonal matrices. We know that already. Any n by n symmetric matrix can also be expressed as a diagonal matrix for a suitable choice of basis vectors. And that means that H alpha beta is also a diagonal matrix. So there's some of the properties of H alpha beta. So let's try for the weak field inverse metric something G contravariant alpha beta is this form here, eta alpha beta, both indices contravariant, and the same with the perturbation term, both raised indices. Now we know that G contravariant alpha beta times G covariant alpha beta is it gives us the identity matrix, and we know that both in flat space metric, in Kalski space, both lowered indices gives us this form, but also raised indices also gives us this form for the metric. Alright, now H alpha beta gives us N, this object here, we can use the flat space metric, Minkowski metric, to raise the indices on this H term here. So for this tensor here, rank 2 tensor, we can raise this indices using the Minkowski metric. So both of these can be raised to give us this object here. Now, this metric, the Minkowski metric, in the, in the contravariant case, multiplied by the Minkowski metric in the covariant case, this object here multiplied again gives us the identity matrix. All right, now the eta alpha, alpha beta multiplied by H lower alpha beta is this object here. When we multiply that, we produce this object, and by the same token. Multiplying in the opposite order, with all indices lowered here, this object multiplied by that one also gives us this object as well. And that will that will we'll use that shortly. Okay, now and both of these multiply together with covariant indices for both rank two. These two metrics multiplied together gives us this one here. Now, what we can do is because H alpha beta was much less than one. All these terms here, this H, this metric representing a small perturbation, and the, the size of these perturbations being much less than one, then we can say that when we multiply together each of the terms on the diagonal becomes squared, and we can say this is approximately a good approximation to zero, because these are very small. And we'll see how that helps us in a minute. All right, so let's take our two metrics here. One in the contravariant case, rank 2, and the other in the covariant case, rank 2, multiply them together. So we'll expand that. Here's the inverse metric, and here's the metric we use for the weak field, and this is the inverse metric for that weak field. Multiply together, we get this first term here, and we produce this one, 
and this one, and then finally this one. Now, next one down, we know already from the previous slide that this gives us the identity matrix. This one and this one, well, we've already seen what this one gives us. And now with these two uh, contravariant indices, we can lower them. Uh, sorry, we can get those from the lowered case, these two here, the two indices lowered by raising them using the uh, Minkowski metric with the upper indices. So that this whole object here, as we saw earlier, can be written by these three here, these three items here multiplied together. And over on the far end here, again, this thing can also be written in a similar way. Here we go. By using the Minkowski metric to raise the two lowered indices. Now we saw that this final bit here, the two lowered ones here multiplied together, gave us that h squared term here, and we've taken that to be approximately zero, so that's going to drop off. Now this one multiplied together, we saw from the previous slide, gave us this, and this object here, well just that bit, that bit there gives us the identity, as we saw earlier, and this one here will give us this object, as we saw on the previous slide, and again. These two will give us the identity, and this will give us two vanishingly small terms. Okay, so this one and this one cancel out, so second and third term cancel out. And we're left now with just the first term, the identity matrix, and the last term. Now, identity matrix, and then minus this bit here, but this has um, gone to zero much more quickly because the individual H terms here across the diagonal were very small to begin with well less than one, very small, and then squaring them made them even more, even even smaller, and so we can take this as being approximately zero, so that we can say this whole expression here, all of this multiplied out gives us the identity matrix, approximately the identity matrix. Next, we so a suitable inverse metric for this weak field case is this one here where the individual H alpha beta terms in the metric are well less than one, and H alpha beta represents small variations or perturbations in flat space. So finally we have inverse metric times the metric is the Kronecker delta, approximately Kronecker delta, very close to it, for small values of H. And that's that.